Yo, what's up guys, it's your boy Kaz, and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I do iced out logo pendants in Blender, like this one. Heads up, I do uh, use Illustrator to get my vector files. So if you have your vector files already, whether you did them with Illustrator or not, it don't matter as long as they're vector files and you can bring them into Blender, you should be good to follow along with this video. But that being said, let's jump right into the video. All right, so the first thing that I like to do is I like to bring in my logo into Illustrator. And with my logo, as you can see, it's just a COS. Um, to be able to connect it, because uh, it does have to be connected into one shape, I like to add an outline. And to do that, all you do is you select your full logo, you'll go to Object, Offset Path, and then you make sure that the outline of your logo is thick enough. By doing so, it's going to connect the edges of all your logo. Just make sure that it's fully connected on the outside. Once you have that, all you have to do is put it to the side. Make sure with the pen tool you go and you, if you have any gaps in the middle, make sure you connect them. You don't have to connect them, but I prefer to. It just looks a bit more cool. So I connect the, the gaps in, in, in the center of my logo. And once I have that, I put that back behind my COS logo. Then another thing I like to do is I like to add one more um, outline. So I, I, I'll select my outline. I go back to object offset path and I'll make it a bit thicker. I usually go 50% um, um, off from that initial thickness. That way it's a bit thinner um, or half thinner than my first outline. And then once you have this, try to color grade it. So put one a different color than another one. Uh, this won't affect it in uh, Blender, but at least you guys could see what, what it is that you got going on. So pretty much you should end up with your main logo, an outline and a second outline. So the only reason why I do this is because that second outline is going to be the main backing the middle outline or the first outline it's gonna be an indentation onto that backing and then the cos will be separate just like you guys saw on the uh preview once you have this all you got to do is go to file export it as an svg and uh, save it on whatever location you want to save it so now all we have to do is go into blender go to file import import as an svg select your logo and it's going to be right on the center of, and it's gonna be on the origin. So what you would wanna do is scale it up a bit, select all your shapes, and then merge your shapes how they belong. So the COS by itself, I merge them into one, and then the backings are usually just one shape. And so now, so that everything is a bit more visual for you guys, what you guys wanna do is you'll select the inner parts first and you start extruding them little by little. So that way you can start seeing the buildup of all three layers, which I have three layers as you can see here. I have my COS, my again my outline and then my second outline so once you have this uh what you want to do is you want to add a bit of bevel onto your uh, shapes this will give it a bit of a nice little edges smooth edges which will end up actually giving you better reflections onto the model once you have this uh to get that indentation going on the backing of the pendant what you want to do is you want to make sure you select all your objects convert them into a mesh because right now they're curves so convert them into a mesh um, then you're gonna select your backing. So your second outline, you're gonna select that. You're gonna go to you're gonna go to the modifier tab. You're gonna add a boolean modifier to it, and you're gonna target your first outline. What this is gonna do for you, it's it's going to make an indentation um, using that first outline going on to the second outline. Sometimes you're gonna have to switch between exact and fast, and you're gonna have to move it up and down a little bit. So basically, once you have that. You'll control A onto the modifier, you're gonna apply it, and then you're gonna get rid of that first outline, and you should be able to see an indentation. If you do see an indentation, what you might wanna do is you might wanna make sure you have your um, scale and rotation applied, and you wanna make sure the set origin is set to the centered of the geometry. To do that, all you gotta do is right click, set origin uh, to geometry, and uh, you should see that yellow dot go into the center of your geometry your match your object so once you have that indentation you could pretty much just now go ahead and place the uh, main logo onto the backing of the pendant however you want now the second thing that i like to do is i like to add a loophole onto my pendant that's where i'm going to be basically hooking it up to the uh, shame so to do that all you want to do is go ahead shift a you're going to add a, a torus you're going to make it small as small as you want um, you want to go ahead and, and delete half of it so it's you only have the upper half and you're going to bring it down as much as you can connect it onto your pendant of course making sure you leave a nice little gap in, in between for you to be able to hook the uh or you know connect the hook onto it now for the hook uh 
the easiest way that I find to do this is to literally just add a cube. So shift A, add a cube. Um, on the side edges, you want to go to number three. Uh, so you have face selection selected and you want to go ahead and inset. You want to X, X and delete those faces. Then you want to select both um, edges and you want to go ahead and right click and bridge edge loops what that's going to do is pretty much is going to connect those two edges so it's going to have a nice little uh indentation or hole in your cube now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and control 2 to apply a subdivision modifier which is going to make this look a whole lot smoother and you want to select that bottom face and you want to scale it on the um x-axis what that's going to do is going to make it thinner at the bottom and thicker at the top which is how most of the normal pendant hooks look like now once you have this you pretty much have your pendant made and you again you could do this pretty much with any logo you want now the last thing you want to do to your pendant is add a cool material to it so whether you're going to do regular silver or regular gold that's up to you that you go ahead and do that but for this uh, case i want to add a nice style look to it um i've actually done a tutorial like this before um but i didn't know of this uh specific material that i'm going to be using before and uh this is a game changer i've used this uh material multiple times on many of my um chain products and uh, my pendant products that i've done in the past for client work and personal work and this material is called fake diamonds shader by lance fan keep in mind this material works for both cycles and ev and it is fully customizable you can customize the color of it the shape of your diamond and even the gap in between each diamond without having to add diamonds one at a time like i was doing before so if you do want to grab this material there is going to be a link down below where if you click on that it's going to take you to their website you're going to be able to make a purchase and by doing so you're also going to be helping me since i'm an affiliate of this material but again totally worth it and it's only 10 bucks so if you want to follow along with this tutorial and you want to just make sure you have an upgrade to your upcoming projects and save yourself some time from placing diamonds one at a time this material is the right one to get but anyways literally all you want to do if you get this material is it's going to give you a blender um file that blender file you want to download it once you download it you want to go into your blender project you want to go to file append you're going to look for your pro for, the, for the blender file that you downloaded and it's going to have you it's going to open up some folders you're going to go into the material folder and on the material folder there's going to be a whole bunch of different materials so you could explore through all of them but in this case i went for the round diamond and so that once you double click on that and you open it it's nothing that's going to show up but then now when you go and select your object and you go into the material property and you select the, you browse through your materials that are available you're going to be able to see the uh diamond the round diamond shader now once you do add it it's going to look a bit weird so to fix that what you want to do is you want to select your object you want to go into edit mode you want to hit three to face select and you want to select all of your mesh you want to right click you want to uv unwrap faces and then you're going to click on smart uv project and what this is going to do it's exactly what it says it's going to uh, uv unwrap your model and so if it still does look weird all you would want to do is go back to your material properties go to size on the diamond shader and just bring that up a bit and you'll see the difference so once you bring that size up literally you could just place it at whatever number you want of course as the bigger you go the more diamonds there will be within your model the lower you go the bigger the diamonds will show up but anyways if you guys did enjoy this video please make sure to drop a like down below comment if you have any questions uh if, if you're doubting anything um if you need help with anything if there's something that you couldn't quite understand feel free to let me know down below subscribe if you're new to the channel um there's gonna be way many more contents coming up like this one and uh i'll see you guys on the next one peace